Thanks, everybody. Um, part of why I made that decision was when I was originally scheduling this talk, I wasn't sure what I was going to say. And I've sort of redone this talk several times. Um, the talk title is, We Can't See You So You Don't See Us. The conundrum of accessibility and why you are unlikely to have blind coworkers. Um, it's about accessibility, but not in the way that lots of talks are often about accessibility. Um, and to start off, I wanted to define accessibility for people because I've found that although those of us who work in the field of digital accessibility know what we're talking about when we say it. Um, in the general community, it's not necessarily known. And you, I discovered this easily by Googling accessibility and any given product, and you'll see something about accessibility. And in the generic term, it means easy to understand, easy to use for, quote, everyone. Um, what we in the digital accessibility field mean is more specific to people with disabilities, or another way of thinking about it is people who don't use the UI or interact with the software or the system in the default way. They may not use the same input, they may not use the mouse, or they may not use the keyboard in the same way. They may not see the screen the same way or at all. They may not hear audio output. Um, because I am totally blind, I'm going to talk about the experience of being totally blind in the tech sector. Um, I've worked in various aspects of tech. I was in the tech industry and actually left a large Seattle-based uh, software company almost 10 years ago. Um, I've worked in the federal sector since then. I work in digital publishing. So even though I've left the tech industry, as it were, I'm still very much part of um, technology and accessibility. And the issues I ran into 10 years ago, I'm still hearing about. So nothing's changed. And this is sort of why I wanted to give this talk. Um, if you take nothing else away from this talk, think of accessibility not in terms of something you've got to do as a requirement, something that, you know, oh, it's a good idea. Accessibility isn't an end, it's a means. It's a means of allowing everybody to participate as colleagues, as coworkers, as employees, as consumers, as um, in all of digital culture, whether it's developing software, developing creative projects, etc. So let's talk a little bit about what I, what this talk is, is more about, is finding that even though I was programming computers in high school and have dabbled with computers on and off and was working at a tech company, I would find that um, I couldn't necessarily use the tools. And there's this interpretation in, in the tech sector that an inability to use the tool means not being able to understand the concept. So if you say, they say, oh, press that button, and you say there is no button, and they're like, yeah, of course there is. Um, if you can't find it, or it's not defined well, um, then, then they're like, oh, well, you're incompetent and you can't do it. Um, and so I found this with both development tools, and apparently I know a 21-year-old 20 um, computer science major who's blind, who's designing his own audio, 3D audio engine, who is terrified about trying to work in actual um, software because the debugger in Visual Studio isn't accessible. He can't really use it, or it will take so much extra time to figure out how to do it that, and this is what ended up happening to me, and this is what I keep hearing about, is although something may be kind of usable, you can't, you may have to come up with workarounds for it. And so most blind people I know who work in, in technology end up working in accessibility because that's the only place where anybody else knows what you're talking about. Um, 
So even if you're not interested in accessibility, um, you end up having to take care of accessibility issues, filing the bugs, running them down, because those are the things that are blocking you from doing your job. And then people turn around and go, oh yeah, of course, you do accessibility. That makes sense. Yeah, it does, but not in the way they think. They're like, oh, it's because you must be interested in it. It's like, no, it's because it's, I have to fix these problems, and if I don't do it, nobody else will. Um, other products that have, have problems with accessibility are Interface Builder for Xcode, um, Jira, the test environment, or the test bug tracking tool, um, Basecamp, I was talking to one woman who does technical support and customer support and is using Salesforce and it slows her down immensely. And yet, you try and bring these things up and people are like, well, that's somebody else's problem. It's a UI issue, um, it's a development issue, or it's not a development issue, it's a UI issue. Oh, we'll get to that. Um, the problem is, is that nobody ever quite does. Um, I wanted to demonstrate a little bit about what something being completely inaccessible is like, um, especially if nobody here has heard a screen reader before. All tab, post home button, 52%. Uh, the screen tab, Windows Update dialog, restart your computer to finish installing your time. <sighs> Folder view, list view, add all tab, Windows Update. Tab, reminder, top, shift, tab, time, shift, tab, post, home button, alt, plus, space, desktop, folder. All right. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll do something really basic. It's not a development environment, but it works. N O S T sticky notes, E, sticky D, notepad, enter, leaving menus, untitled, dash, notepad, edit. Okay, so you hear it say what the window is. It says untitled, so it gives me, and I'll type in. T A I S space S space A space T E S T period. This is a test. Okay, so this is a test. I can review what I've entered. Menu bar 5F. It'll show me the menus, all of this basic stuff. This is standard sort of Windows based things, right? And um, I, I'll talk about this, but a lot of people default to having to hand code because so many integrated development environments are not accessible. Um, Escape. And I will demonstrate what a thoroughly inaccessible Windows M, Desktop, A, Adobe Acro, A, Adobe A, Adobe A, Adobe A, Adobe Read A, Adam. Enter. Untitled dash Adam. Untitled dash Adam. T A I S B I S B X B T E S T period. Okay, I've just typed something in. I can't tell whether anything is on the screen. I'm trying to access a menu. Nothing is spoken. I can't. Basically, I have no idea what's going on with this window. If there's anything in it, when I close it, it asks me if I want to save. That's the most I can do. And so imagine you are a hotshot blind student who's made it through, who's proven everybody wrong, who's treated, and then you're like, oh, you're coming somewhere where they're going to standardize on a particular tool. And they hand you something you can't use. Where do you go? Do you file a bug and wait for it to be fixed? Meanwhile, you can't get your work done, or it's gonna take you longer because whatever they've had, it, Somebody may have built extensions in. Um, for Adam, I already know there's a company that's decided they're going to standardize their development around this tool. So it's like, okay, this is what happens when you start, when one of the quotes in my, uh, my talk was that somebody said, oh yeah, I've worked at this company for 10 years and I never thought about accessibility because I only built internal tools. And I looked at him and I said, yeah, you're one of the reasons I quit. Because that's what I had to fight constantly. When I tried to get out of working directly in accessibility, I still ran into accessibility issues. And because I was no longer in an accessibility environment, my leads didn't understand, my colleagues didn't understand. If I said, I can't use this, they said, well, you can't do this job. And that's very real. 
And that's why so many people who are blind um, work in, in accessibility regardless of whether they want to or not because we're sort of forced into it. Because there's no, where else can you go? You're gonna end up running into it anyway. And you either spend the extra time doing it or um, you, or you give up. And I know lots of them who've given up. I have one little, um, so anytime you're building UI, regardless of who you think it's intended for, if you, the moment you start writing to the screen, you need to think about accessibility and whether you're using a framework that supports the accessibility framework of the operating system. Every single operating system, or at least most of them, have an accessibility API. All web browsers support accessibility. The least you can do is ask whether the framework you're working in will actually respect that and create something that's usable. Um, how much time do I have? Am I done? Are you good? I'm good? Yeah. Okay, so I was gonna do my quick little demo of what happens talking about the sort of picking of a framework and not thinking about accessibility until later on. And because I don't want to pick on any particular framework or language, I've decided, oops, I've decided to use a metaphor of everybody's favorite building um, metaphor, which are Lego bricks. So, okay, we are going to build our cool UI and we're going to build, use the framework that everybody wants to use. Oops. And they're going <laughs> And so we build our UI. Yay. Somebody says, is it going to be accessible? Oh, we don't know. But everybody uses it. Must be accessible, right? We're not going to think about that right now. We don't have time. We want to loot. We want to build something. Okay. So now we have our user, our little turtle, who says, Oh, you've got your cool UI here, but the steps are actually taller than I am. I can't actually reach, the, I need an accessible, an access platform. Well, we've already built this. Maybe there's something we can tack on at the end. This is the standard approach to accessibility, is you tack it on after you've designed everything else. So, we'll build our little metaphorical, um, ramp here. So we have our ramp and our turtle friend says, um, yeah, that's awfully steep. And they're like, but it's accessible, right? I'm like, well, I kinda, I can sort of use it. And like, okay, great, sort of is as much as you're gonna get. So you do that and you climb over that. And then you say, wait, there's that whole piece over there that I can't get to you, and that happens to be the diagnostics and debugger section. How are you, am I going to do that? There's no, oh, the pieces we have won't allow us to modify that. We'd have to re-architect. We'd have to change the whole setting. Well, you could have thought about that before. Oh, yes, we could have, we didn't. You're gonna cost us budget now. How about we provide you an alternative way of getting to that? Here, we'll put a ramp in over there. And so you say, so you're giving me a separate interface to get over there, and once I'm up over here, that means I have to go back down, find a new way over, find it, go over here, and I still don't have full access. Well, are you telling, we don't have budget, we don't have time, this is why you have to think about accessibility when you're starting to architect. It's an architecture issue, it's a design issue, it's a UI issue, and not thinking about it can hurt employees, it can hurt. And the more things go, you know, things that start out as little internal tools, they end up external. So eventually it will hurt real customers and real people outside your, your little environment. I hope this makes sense. If you have any other questions or if my metaphor didn't quite work, please let me know. <laughs> Thanks.